that an architect can frustrate or he can enable and those are two sort of pragmatic things that an architect's supposed to do. Uh, obviously he's supposed to enable, not frustrate. Um, they're sort of the practical side, but on the other hand he can inspire. And in the same way I believe you can say a homemaker is there to inspire her family. She's there to feed them or to do pragmatic things or make sure that they have beds or that they um, uh, have uh, uh, clothes to wear and, and so on. But really what is a homemaker doing? A homemaker is inspiring her family. So it's, we, I see a very a parallel there between what an architect should be doing and what a homemaker does. I think architects at first ought to be human beings. Um, we ought to know about homemaking from making homes ourselves, being in homes that have been made, uh, living with our parents, living with our siblings, um, making homes of our own. Um, or if we are so lonely that we don't do that, we might go and observe other people doing it. Um, I, I'm sure we all have experience of what homes are and how they should, on things that are required. So I, I always think architects who are just architects are really, uh, they can't be, you know, they have to be human beings as well. So I think an architect, um, the question is, is their humanity brought out in their work? Can, can they transfer their, their basic humanity into their work? Or are they cajoled, prevented, um, persuaded not to, to do something that's sort of somehow high art, but not uh, practical or useful? Um, and of course, there are architects who are very, um, how shall I say, willful and, uh, and maybe don't um, uh, perhaps forget uh, some of the constraints that home home life has, but by and large, I think most architects are in, tend to be very sympathetic um, and um, thoughtful about building housing. There's a lot of very worthy legislation to do with making everything very accessible. So, um, and effectively, what it does is it it tends to make your bathroom bigger and your bedroom bigger, which is all jolly good and very nice, except that basically people who are buying flats can only afford a certain amount of space. And if you make a lot of worthy legislation about how big everything has to be, then their living room just gets smaller. It's the only thing left. You squeeze the living room. It would be um, marvelous if politicians would pay some attention to the uh, what's good in housing what works in housing and what is less successful, but proselytise for the good rather than simply damn the bad. And I feel that politicians too much are, um, make uh, publicity about bad things that shouldn't be done, rather than going on the sort of positive side and saying, look at these, these are, I believe these are marvellous examples of modern housing or old housing that really work very well and this is why I think they work. You know, I think politicians should be more proactive in helping people understand why their environment works or doesn't work. Uh, where you live, it seems to me that where you have a home, you kind of want something else. You, you want to perhaps escape the harsher realities of the city and go to your home which has softer, a softer kind of world. Um, where uh, you can nurture a family. Um, they will, of course, go out into the city, but when they come in, it's nice to have somewhere where they feel safe, comforted, and you can carry on the, the life of the family first, then the life of your, with your neighbours, with your neighbourhood, and work out from that.